All right, we're here. Uh, I've got two different float bowl carburetors. There's three styles, float bowl, suction, and diaphragm. And what I'm going to cover here is the float bowl. I've got two different styles here because they don't have 100% same components and so that I can show you the, the differences. This carburetor here is a well bro carburetor. It happens to be off of a Briggs and Strat. And the first thing I'm going to do to take this apart is I'm going to take the main jet off the bottom. So I simply go ahead and unscrew this. And the main jet is a normal plug, and most of them have a small hole in it that allows the, the fuel to flow through. And you also have a fiber washer. Wow. And this one is obviously stuck together. So we'll go ahead and pop the seal. And when I take the bowl off, if you look on the inside of the bowl, you can see how it's kind of cruddy here. Uh, that's one of the problems that normally happens. Any dirt clogs up the passageways if you let fuel dry in the bowl, that creates a problem as well. Now this particular one, this has a plastic float here. And the first thing that we're going to do is simply slide the hinge pin out. And that allows us to pull the float along with the needle out. Okay. Now these plastic floats, periodically the seal between the two pieces of plastic can, can go and they fill up with fluid. If that happens, the float needs to be replaced um, on the plastic floats. It, the needle to float adjustment is fixed. It's not adjustable. Okay. This is a what we call a uh, solid needle. The tip is actual metal, where the inside here, down in the hole here, um, the seat is a called a viton, which is a form of rubber. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a quick tool. I'm going to take a heavy-duty paper clip. I'm going to bend it, the tip at 90 degrees. And then cut off as much of the bent area as possible. And so I, here I have my little tool that's basically going to allow me to reach down in and pull the seat out. So what I do is I fit it through the hole, if I can. I'm going to redo it since I didn't cut off enough. So I'll bend it again at 90, and this time cut a little bit more off that I can actually get down in, in through the hole. And so I got to fit it through and then I can go ahead and pull it out and there we have our seat. Okay. Now when you put these seats back in, there's two sides. One side has a rib to it and the other side, if you look real close at it, has a small number stamped in it. When you put it down in, you put the rib down. Okay. And basically I have this all apart. The only part that is left here is we have a welch plug here. And the only time I need to remove that welch plug is if, I'm, if I've cleaned it and I'm truly still having trouble with the carburetor. It basically opens up a passageway. Now this one on the inside really doesn't uh, buy you a whole lot. Um, it's more the one on the outside here that, that actually buys you a little bit more. This one gives you access to the idle ports that come out at the inside of the throttle plate right here. Okay? Your Venturi is the narrow passageway right here in the middle, uh, which is actually where the uh, high-speed operation fuel and air is actually mixed. Um, when you go through the power point to that, you can take a little closer look at actually what's happening there. But it creates a little pressure point. Um, on this particular carburetor, one other thing that we want to check is you want to check the wear on the carburetor housing itself. And you do that by taking the throttle plate, turning it so that it's basically a part throttle position, and you're looking for a side-to-side -side movement. Now there's just a very slight movement, not enough that it's really going to create a problem. But if you have movement in that throttle plate, the housing is worn, and it's going to suck in air that's unregulated at that throttle shaft. The only fix for that is replace the whole entire carburetor. Okay? So we've got that one apart. Now this one here has a couple added components. 
Okay, so the first thing that I've got here, this one has adjustable high speed or main needle valves along with an idle needle valve. So on this style to take it apart, what I want to do is I want to turn it in, counting the number of turns till it's all the way in. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that, because this is one of our school ones, that this is basically snug here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and turn the needle in. There's a half. There's one turn, half, two turns, and just over two full turns, okay? I want to write that down because that's going to be a starting point for when I try to run the engine, okay? And when I take it apart, I pull the needle out, you have a uh, rubber O-ring, there should be a brass washer between the O-ring and the spring, which on this one there isn't. And then you have your needle valve. Now, when you're looking at the needle valve, it should be nice and smooth. It should not be ribbed. Once we have that out, we can go ahead and take the actual jet out. And this one should have a fiber washer between. But you can see here that we have a larger hole and then up above in this open area there should be some real fine small holes. I need to make sure that those are clear and that I can actually blow air through them. Okay? When we open this up it's basically the same. This one has a brass uh, float on it okay? and I'll just take that off. I'm not going to take this fully apart but if you look at it here you have the uh, tab here for the needle is adjustable. And when I put this together, and this one is actually rusted and we're going to end up completely destroying this one, which isn't going to come apart, I got a feeling. But when you put it together, because I'll put this one basically together, what you're going to do is you're going to take the needle and actually attach it to the float and just have it so that gravity's taking it down. When you have your, um, let's see, we'll go ahead and put this back in if I can, so that we actually see. All right, there it's turned, let this fit down. And I go ahead, basically press the, the seat back in. But if you do pull that seat out, make sure that you replace it. If you pull it out, you've scratched it, uh, which will cause it to leak. But all we do is to put it back together, we simply just place it on. Now on the brass one, what you're going to do is put your hinge in. So I'll put the hinge pin in, get it slid through. Now, in the top drawer of the tool chest, we have this red 1164 drill bit. We painted it red for easy identification. But we simply lay it right on top of the float and the top of it of the drill bit should be even with the top of the air horn here. Okay. Now this is a fixed one so we can't adjust it, but on the brass we adjust it by bending this tab either in or out to get that level correct. Okay. And we'll push that one back aside. Okay. And then we also have on this particular one here we have the idle speed adjustment screw. Okay, and again, we'll go ahead and turn this in. There's a half, there's one, and half, two, roughly two and a quarter. Okay, and then so we can go ahead, back this one out as well. And again, it should be the same type of setup as what we had before. So when we pull it out, we have the needle spring on it should have a brass washer, which we do have right there, and then the O-ring is still in here, and so there we have the O-ring. So this should be your normal setup that you have. So O-ring, brass washer, spring, as it goes together. Okay, so we'll throw this back together real quick. Um, we're just using old parts. These O-rings are completely shot. They don't even look like O-rings anymore, so they should be re replaced. Many of these bowl carburetors, you can get a 
uh, complete rebuild kit, which will come with the O-rings, gaskets, uh, the parts that wear on it. Now what I'm going to do when I put the, these back in, I'm going to go ahead and bottom it out, but I'm not going to wrench on it, so there it just bottoms out. Now, typically on the idle speed, it should be three quarters to one turn out. So I'll back it out, there's half, there's three quarter. I'm going to go to one, okay, and that should be enough to get it started. But if I can't get it started, then I want to go back to where it was when I took it apart, okay? But the three-quarter to one is, is a preliminary setting according to most manufacturers. All right, we'll go back to this one. And so all we've got left is simply put, put on the bowl gasket. We put the bowl on. Now, if you look at this particular bowl, it's got a, a raised area or a different offset. The, the shallower area here should be on the hinge side when you put it put it back together. And so we simply kind of reverse the order. And we go snug with it. You don't need to go super tight with it. And this one's basically back together. Yes, we didn't clean it, um, which can be done later. And this one didn't have all the, the parts to it. Simply throw this together. Okay, the one other thing that I wanted to show you with the float bowl carburetors, I happen to grab another one here, is, and the, you find this a lot of times on the Tecumsehs, but we have the fuel inlet fitting here. Uh, what I see in, in class a lot of times is students want to try to turn these, and they're not supposed to turn. You have a steel part going into this plastic, and it's all supposed to be one, one, um, one piece and what happens is it, it's kind of knurled in there and when you you start to turn them you're stripping it out and what will actually happen is this fitting will start to, to leak and when that this fitting goes it's very difficult to get the the pressed in steel piece out let alone try to replace it and so in most cases it ends up meaning you gotta get a whole carburetor okay so Try not to be turning these back and forth. They, there should be a lot of friction to it to actually go ahead and move it. Um, try not to move it because that does cause damage. Okay, one thing that I uh, forgot to mention is with newer mowers, uh, newer engines, the carburetors, we have two different ways. Uh, you may not have these adjustments, the high speed main or idle speed uh, adjustments. You'll have what we call a fixed carburetor, uh, meaning that the uh, opening size within the jet regulates the amount of fuel and there's no way to adjust it. So if you don't have those adjustments, you've got what we call a fixed carburetor. Other carburetors have the adjustments, but they have these, uh, they're typically red and white plugs that are put over the top of them that prevents you from being able to make any adjustments. These are called EPA plugs. They're put on by the manufacturer to meet EPA specifications as far as the you know, emissions. In other words, they're adjusted at the factory and they're preventing you from doing adjustments. These EPA plugs can be removed with uh, very carefully and, and adjustments can be made. Once that has been done though, any warranty uh, it is null and void because these EPA plugs have been removed. Um, so we typically try not to uh, remove those unless we absolutely, absolutely have to and they're not easily done.